Hey everyone, I wanna to talk to you about taking care of your machine, specifically oiling your machine and how to do it. Uh, now this is my very first sewing machine. My mom got it for me as a gift for my university graduation and I love this machine. We have been through so much together. We have sewed so many things and we've been up a lot of nights working through a lot of projects. Uh, it's an incredible machine. It's an old Janome. It basically powers through everything. It'll sew chiffon, it'll sew denim, like you name it. How many layers, how many delicate things, how many intricate details, it does it all. But it's just time for me to move on. I've got a new machine that I've been working with and I think it's time for me to pass this on. So I have a friend who my machine is going to be going to. I definitely want to make sure that it stays in a good home. Uh, but it squeaks like a maniac. So I wanna make sure that when I pass on the machine to my friend that she's not thinking what is going on with this machine because it will last her another 20 years. I told her that. So I'm gonna show you how to oil this machine, how to oil your machine at home in order to keep it running smooth forever. So your machine will come with a few supplies suitable for oiling it. You'll probably have a couple of screwdrivers uh, and then you'll have a little tiny tube of oil like this plus a little lint brush. And then these are some tools that I would suggest adding to that. Uh, you might wanna get a bigger thing of oil. Just make sure that it's specifically for sewing machines. Uh, you don't wanna use just any oil. You don't wanna use a three-in-one. Make sure you're using sewing machine oil. Uh, and then I uh, like to have on hand a cheap little toothbrush. I find that's great for getting lint out. Um, also Q-tips. Now these kind of leave lint behind, but if you get the very inexpensive, like no-name Q-tips, um, then they don't have as much fluff and fuzz on them. And I just like them for getting in there and grabbing little bits. Uh, and then I like to keep a little tiny bit of uh, fabric on hand as well. Um, I'll often use like a flannelette or a fleece or something that will grab fibers and not leave any threads or lint behind. Um, this is just a jersey, but definitely look for something that will, will help to kind of grab, um, through static electricity, grab your, your lint out of there without leaving any fibers. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of clean and dust your machine, uh, get rid of any excess lint that you see around here. And then basically we're putting oil in wherever um, you kind of have metal on metal. So I would suggest taking off your uh, presser foot and your needle, uh, just leave those over to the side. Um, this needle mechanism, it goes up and down. There's lots of action, lots of uh, movement happening around there. Just put a little tiny dab of oil in there. Basically anywhere that metal touches metal, if it gets a little bit messy, we'll go around after and kind of clean it up. Where metal rubs on metal, metal goes up and down. You want to get in there. Uh, so this is just right by your, um, uh, the needle clamp. You're, I'm just putting a dab of oil in there. I can use the screws to take this off, uh, take off my throw plate, get in there and dust it around. And then in the front of my machine, I'll take off this extension, flip this down. Um, I wanna clean out in here and oil in the back mechanism here. So uh, I'm gonna move these out of the way and pull out, uh, first pull out your bobbin case uh, and then pull out this whole hook mechanism. So I'm pulling this out pulling this out and then another thing you may want to do is put a little bit of the machine oil on your fabric and that way when you're kind of wiping this and cleaning it off uh, you're going to distribute a little bit of oil on there as well so we'll just get some in there make sure you get some right 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 at that hook portion uh, and then we'll just get in around the back too so I like doing this because it kind of cleans and uh, distributes just a little tiny bit of oil all at the same time. And then I can put a little bit uh, more just right in here where those are going to touch. Um, always wipe it off uh, right around here because you don't want any excess oil coming up into your machine and on your fabric and on your garments. Uh, and then I'm going to use the same cloth that has a bit of oil and I'm going to go in the back here, uh, just underneath and in and around all these mechanisms. Now, before, um, before you do this, just make sure you get rid of as much dust as possible, whether you're um, uh, using 
sprayed air. I know some people love to use a canned air. That's not always necessarily the best, uh, just because you might get uh, um, uh, threads and lint jammed in further into your machine, but I know some people love it. Um, but even just a, just a cloth without any, any extra fibers is great too. So I've smoothed in a little bit of oil back in this mechanism back here. Uh, and then just make sure that you get it on all of our little pieces that are going to be rubbing in together. And a little bit right at that back center point, right at the back. Again, once I put a couple drops, I'll just take my cloth in there to smush it all around. Uh, and absorb any excess. Once you've got that done, we'll put everything back in its place. Just make sure everything's going in properly. And you can always check your machine's manual for specific instructions. Look up the manufacturer online uh, because each company has different recommendations. Bring these clamps down here to lock everything in place. I'll just give my bobbin another quick wipe. Uh, make sure that there's no excess dust and I'll get in there too. And then I'll put my bobbin case back in. Sorry, the bobbin case. And give the bobbin case a good wipe. Snap that back in, close that all up. And then we want to do the side of the machine. This can come off. So your machine, you might have access to this in a different way, uh, but this is how I do this particular machine. Do this screw right here. And this whole side case comes off. So, turn this around to the front. Again, get in there, wipe everything down. Um, you probably want to turn your machine off beforehand just so that you don't accidentally sew something or hurt yourself or. Um, you know, do anything else that could be damaging. Uh, and then I'm just taking this cloth that already has a little bit of oil on it. I'm going to add a little bit more. And then we'll just kind of get in here, wipe it down. So I'm kind of doing like a two in one. I'm getting rid of excess dust while um, putting some oil in there as well. And basically you just wanna put little drops of oil anywhere that you see metal touching metal. So we can go in and get a little bit closer. And then just wipe away the excess, of course. And then this is kind of the top of where your needle is. That piece is always moving up and down, so that's a good one. And then once that's done, you can close everything up. I'll put this piece back on, put the screw back in place. And then put the cap back on. And slide this back. I'll replace my presser foot and my needle and then I'm good to go. So there you have it. It's not that difficult to oil your machine once you know what you're doing and once you have the right tools. Now, how often should you oil your machine? Some people are really, really crazy about it and they'll do it after every project or once a week and that's definitely okay, but I wouldn't, you know, don't drive yourself crazy. So I would suggest listening to your machine. See how it feels, see how it sounds, see if anything has changed. Um, otherwise, you could do it preventatively, maybe once a year, once every few years. Uh, but with a workhorse like this, I barely did it. So it's not something that you should go nuts over, I think. Um, but it is a good idea to do it from time to time.